everyone. In today's video, I will be doing a overview of my second gen Overland Tacoma. If you think you've seen this before, it's probably because you have. But since filming the first video, I have made a lot of changes and I think that deserves a video on its own now. Um, I built this truck to be a versatile platform that I can adapt depending on the situation or kind of trip I'm going on, not to be solely an off-road capable car. Some of the changes um, I've made since the last video include a new solar setup, way more additional storage, including a uh, bike repair station. That's gonna be enough of the intro. Let's get right into the features. All right, we're gonna be starting off with the front end of the car and moving back. I actually have a list of everything this time so I can remember. Um, but starting off with the front end lighting, we have aftermarket lights. These are the Akon U-tubes. I really like the overall look, but the build quality and the bulbs that come with it are not that great. Luckily, I just got sent replacement LED H1 bulbs by Bosla, which significantly increased the brightness and actually made the uh, everything match from the kind of orangish halogen to white LED. So that's gonna be the headlights. We have a 32 inch aux beam light bar with the aux beam hidden light bar mounts that allows me to mount it into the grill section here. Two ditch lights using the Cali raised LED ditch light mounts. And then on the very top, we have a 42 inch aux beam light bar. I wish I spent more money and actually got proper light bars, but for the price, for like 200 bucks for everything, this works out just fine for me. I haven't felt the need to get a bumper yet, so everything below this is gonna be just the stock bumper, besides a uh, aftermarket skid plate on the bottom, which is gonna be the RCI steel skid plate. All right, for the next part, we'll be looking at the wheels and the suspension. I built this as a slow moving overland rig, not high performance. Because of that, I ended up just going with a base level kind of Bilstein 5100 lift. About two inches in the front, about an inch and a half in the rear, I believe. The one unique thing I did with this build is I went with a medium duty Dakar leaf pack in the back. Based on the weight that I have on the vehicle, it should have been a heavy duty, but I wanted to make sure it was a very smooth ride, which is why I went with medium duty. That ends up kind of preloading it all the time because of the weight and it's a very smooth ride no matter where I go. What does that mean long term? It means that the springs are going to wear out but because of the price I'd rather have a smoother ride quality than just getting kind of bucked and jarred everywhere no matter what trail I'm on. So if you guys are debating on doing a similar build I really recommend going with the 5100s especially if you aren't planning on doing anything high speed or high performance because it's an overland rig. You're not going to be mobbing down a trail at 50 miles an hour because you got everything else that's on it. So as far as the tires go, I have always gone with the Falcon Wild Peaks. These are going to be roughly a 33 inch tire, 285, 70, 17, I believe. These are the FN FX Pro wheels, 17 inch rims, zero offset. Now, because I have these aftermarket rims with a bigger tire, I did have to do the cab mount chop, which is where I take off a little bit of the frame, but I only had to do that on the driver's side. I guess because the way the geometry of the car is, is kind of offset, so I didn't have to do the cab mount chop on the passenger side, and the only time the tire contacts the frame is if I'm going super fast into a turn. All right, moving on to the roof rack. I have the pretty standard Prinsu full cab rack. I went with this one because it's a modular system, uh, which is probably why you see every almost every other off-road Tacoma have one but because I'm able to change the rails uh, depending on where I want them and also all the different points of contact to mount things to um, is the main reason I ended up going with the Prinsu. If we look at the storage, I have two Plano 42 inch boxes on the top. One of these holds all of my recovery gear which includes um, two kinetic ropes, tow ropes and soft shackles and ratchet straps. The other one holds all of my wood cutting and safety equipment, including gloves, axes, um, leveling blocks, and a couple other accessories. And in between both of those cases, I was able to perfectly fit a set of Orkish traction boards. So on the other side of the rack, I have a full size shovel for whatever uses I need it for. One, the other unique thing I did to this rack is I have adjustable floodlights. Now what these are, they are four inch floodlights mounted to what's called a ram mount which is essentially a ball and socket system. What that lets me do is if I need a high powered light in a direction I typically don't need it or I typically don't have it, like if I'm setting up camp at night, I just loosen the mount and I can adjust the light in whichever direction I need for additional lighting. 
Other than that, I use them as like additional ditch lights for off to the sides. So now we're gonna be getting into the real interesting part of the video. The back end of the truck is where I have all of the unique features that I built that really make it a unique utility truck. The Overland rack is gonna be a 10 inch high max modular short bed Tacoma rack. It's a long name. Uh, the reason I went with Max Modular is it's a modular overland rack system. The manufacturer has a lot of different pieces that you can interchange. Um, everything from these bike mounts to this storage box. So depending on what kind of build you want to do, you can totally customize this to make it look your own style. Looking at the storage box right here, I use this for a lot of different random items. Um, I have everything from a shower to a miniature chair additional lighting, locks, bungee cords, and paracord. So that's just gonna be kind of a generic storage box. Again, we have the Max Modular bike racks. Uh, currently, I have these configured to work with one through axle bike and one quick release bike. Other than that, all the other bikes are stored on the bike rack when I have it set up for kind of like the biking configuration. Looking on this side, we have two Rotopax gas cans. These things are very controversial in the off-road world. Um, these hold four gallons of gas, so for me that gets me less than 40 miles. Um, do I ever use them for myself? No, I've never had to use these. Do I use them for others? Yes. Um, would I get them again? Probably not. If I was to redo this build, I would just replace this with another storage box like on the other side. All right, so looking at the big ticket item that's on the Overland rack, I have the iCamper Sky Camp Mini. This has been a real awesome rooftop tent. Uh, I have two more videos about this tent in particular. First is the overview and features video. And then secondly, I have a one year review video showing the pros and cons of this tent in particular. On top of the tent, I have a 100 watt solar panel, which is charging the battery in the kitchen, which you will see later as well as a WeBoost cell phone booster antenna on the left side, and then a four foot long CB radio antenna on the right side. So as you can see, I have way too much stuff in the bed of this truck, which is probably why I get like 10 miles to the gallon from the previous 16. But these are all what makes this build unique. So let's go through each of these little individual sections and I'll show you what I have. The main piece of my build, which is the seven foot pullout kitchen. Um, if you're interested, I have a full detailed video breaking down this build up here. But as a quick recap, I just have a Coleman stove, cutting board, three pound propane tank, pantry, fridge, and then 500 watt goal zero battery, which is charged from the solar panel on the roof. So this is currently set up in what I call the biking configuration. What that means is that I have a toolbox full of solely bike related tools, as well as a couple others in the pantry right here. And then I also have this park tool bike mount, which connects to the E-Tracks on the tonneau cover and that allows me to work on bikes no matter where I'm at. And then also I have a Thule two bike mount right here on the hitch. I think this is the T2 Pro I wanna say, and that allows me to hold two bikes there and then two bikes on the roof rack. So that's gonna cover the kitchen in this configuration. Let's go and switch it over to the Overland. All right, so this is the Overland configuration and pretty much all it's changed is I replaced the bike mount with a tool roll that holds all of my utensils. I now have replaced the toolbox with a cookware box that holds all my pots and pans. Everything in the pantry is now pantry related food items. And then I also have my five gallon water storage container that's on the other side of the pantry. That's gonna kinda just sum up this. Let's put this back inside and I will fill you in on everything else that's inside of the truck bed. So besides all those LED lights that I have strung up inside the bed of the truck, pretty much the two things that are always with me are gonna be these two containers. So starting off with this box, this stays in the car at all times. This is kind of tucked away in the very back of the truck bed. And what I have in here is gonna be a Husky toolkit, fire extinguisher, D-rings for recovery, and then also a Smittybilt CO2 tank that I use for reinflating my tires. I 
And then the other thing I keep with me is uh, two interchangeable boxes. Basically, this one holds all of my biking equipment and gear. Um, so just like boots, cycling shoes, uh, cycling packs. So that stays in there when it's set up for biking. And then when I switch it out for Overland, I basically just replace this with an empty one that I put like additional clothing, um, a heater and some other stuff into. So yeah, I think that pretty much sums up the whole outside and then the interior of the truck. Let's finish off with what I changed up and then I'll show you the interior and I think we're done. One of the biggest reoccurring issues I've had with this truck is storage space. Um, Cause I bring a lot of junk with me when I go overlanding. To alleviate this problem, my most recent addition are cargo e-tracks. These are typically used in freight for securing pallets. What I did for about a hundred bucks is I mounted these uh, steel e-tracks directly to the hard tonneau cover. These allow me to get these modular rings that come in different shapes and sizes, and I can put them kind of anywhere I want all along the tonneau cover, and it lets me secure my uh, bags with bungee cords kind of no matter where I want. And just as an extra safety precaution, I added in this cargo net to hold anything that might try to fall out. And then on top of that, I just added in additional LED lighting underneath the uh, tent. Being a bike mechanic for the last seven years, it's always been kind of a goal of mine to be able to have a mobile setup. So once I have the bike mount attached to the E-Tracks, that right there gives me a platform that I can work on pretty much any of my bikes with. I would say it has a load capacity of about 40, 40 pounds, but I don't own an e-bike, so that's not my problem. But once I have the bike mounted, I just pull out this. And there you go, I have an entire bike set up ready to go. Keep the uh, derailleur alignment gauge in the pantry and whatever the issue is, I can fix it. All right, so we're just about done guys. I know it's a long video. Um, we're gonna switch into the cab now with the GoPro and I'll show you what I have done in there. Um, recently, again, because of my storage situation, I took out the one of the rear seats. I have the Taco Tunes 10 inch sub right here with a kicker. Um, I added in these protection rails recently since I have the seat um, taken out. What this lets me do is I can stack my photography um, equipment here, which kind of ends up going up to almost here. Um, which I then a backpack stacked up on top of that. That's going to kind of be the only thing I've done back here. But if we go towards the front, I'll show you everything else. Looking at the dashboard, we have two buttons. This one controls the cell phone booster. So when I enable that, it will give my cell phone um, a boosted signal from this antenna right here. And then I also have a light switch controller which is um, turned on through this button. So when I press that, that turns on. So let's turn all of those off. Oh, looking inside my very dusty cab, the two forms of communications I have is gonna be a Baofeng radio, UV-5R. I use this for communicating with my friends. I program 20 different channels into here. Uh, also acting as a police scanner and the other form is a CB radio which is connected to right here Which is a Cobra unit. Um, I use that to kind of just listen in on truckers at this point and also use a uh, Public address horn, but you didn't hear that for me Other than that, this is the light bar controller. I'll provide a link to this in the description It's a pretty cheap controller compared to other ones like switch pros But it has six different buttons which all control the different aspect of the lights on my truck and then finishing up with the inside move this guy out of the way oh. we have all the controllers um we boost antenna controller kicker amplifier and then additional we boost antennas for my phone and then that's my redneck way of reducing vibration noises <laughs> piece of cardboard Trust me, the car was clean last week. I went off-roading once and now it looks like that. But that's gonna finish up the video, everyone. Hopefully this gives you insight on your own personal Tacoma builds if you guys are looking into going that route. This has been a very fun build for me and I feel like I'm kind of at the very end. I don't really know what else I can do to this thing. Um, but that's just gonna sum it up. My second gen Overland Tacoma build built 
for utility, not solely for off-road. So that's going to finish it up, guys. If you like what you saw, make sure to subscribe. Uh, I have a lot more videos coming with a lot more overland trips. I'm like 10 videos behind at this point, but definitely going to enjoy the future of this build, especially with all the new features. Thanks for watching, guys.